going to move on to uh, unit um, 23. And questions 72 to 74. Okay, so this looks like um, um, it's talking about carb. It ha it shows us the carboxylate anion um, and its resonance form of the carboxylate anion, and it shows us without really telling us, but that the electrons here are delocalized. So we write two resonance forms, but in reality, it is there is a resonance hybrid, as uh, they've written, uh, because these electrons are delocalized. So, and it's because of this delocalization of electrons that this carboxyl, carboxylate anion has um, added uh, stability. So just like the benzene ring through um, resonance has an added stability, and it's for this reason that these are um, considered among the strongest acids in organic chemistry because uh, the conjugate base, which you are looking at right now, um, has this gain in resonance energy. So they talk about some of the rules uh, for resonance. Hopefully you know them already, but uh, one of the rules that you definitely should underline is that only electrons may be shifted to adjacent atoms or bond positions. And that's another way of saying you cannot move atoms. <laughs> you can't move atoms when you're doing these resonance structures. You can only move the um, electrons. And uh, the other thing it says is the resonance structures show each atom with a complete octet with as little charge separation as possible. So those are a couple of important points. Then question 72. So which of the following represents a pair of resonance structures? So if you uh, look at A, A is um, actually not a resonance structure because A is the same molecule. It's just um, left, right, flipped. If you uh, look at it carefully, if you just take the molecule and flip it onto the other side, um, you would notice uh, that it is the identical um, molecule. So A is not resonance structure. It's not a moving, changing the place of electrons. Then looking at B, um, now we have a problem. We have an atom that was removed. If you look carefully at B on the left side, um, you can see that uh, there's a CH3, CH, CH3, but in the second molecule, it's CH2C, and then there's an OH below. So answer choice B is wrong because an atom hydrogen has moved from CH3 to the oxygen, not permitted for resonance structures. Now C, let's first check to make sure that all the atoms are in place. They didn't move. So CH3, C, CH3, yeah, yeah, for C, yeah, that's in place. OH, OH, perfect. So now we have to make sure that the, there's some logic to uh, uh, what's going on. Uh, so in one of the molecules, you have C, C like this, you have OH. Well, and we have a positive charge there. Okay, this is, by the way, called a secondary carbocation. It's a positively charged carbon, and there are two other carbons attached to it. Two carbons makes it secondary. If it had three carbons attached, tertiary, if there was only one carbon attached to it, it's a primary carbon. So it's a secondary carbocation, or also called a carbonium ion. And um, when we look at this, uh, there are electrons on this um, oxygen that uh, would be attracted to that positive charge. So we can imagine those electrons going, uh, being attracted to that positive charge. And if those electrons were to move in such a way, then you would have a double bond uh, with the carbon. The carbon would have four bonds, so now it's neutral. And um, the oxygen, however, gave up its electrons to make this bond, and so it would have a positive charge. So now these are fairly written as, um, as uh, resonance structures. Then looking at uh, answer choice D, well, we have that same situation as the as answer choice A, where this is really just the flip of the molecule. If you just take the molecule, flip it the other way, you see that it uh, lands perfectly on uh, D. So uh, the answer for 72 would be C. 73. 
Okay, so uh, consider the resonance structures one, two, and three shown below. Which one is the major contributor to the real structure? Well, th this is easy because, uh, you know, they gave us the rules <laughs> um, before. And uh, one of the rules they said is uh, to have a complete octet. So an octet is to have eight um, uh, electrons. And that's what um, uh, the, um, the atoms will prefer to have. If you have a choice, you're going to choose a resonance structure that has eight uh, electrons around it. And the, the molecule in the center, which we have C, C, O, O, C, H3, this molecule, here we have carbon with, remember each bond is an electron pair, so this is carbon with two, four, six, eight electrons around it, that's the octet, octet stands for eight, and so um, this is in a really great position, and plus, there's no separation of charge, because that's the, one of the other rules that uh, Acer gave, was that um, the, uh, to minimize separation of charge and to have octet. This fulfills both rules. The first molecule they show, there's a separation of charge, plus and negative, plus <laughs> there is uh, um, no octet for the carbon. Carbon is surrounded by six electrons, not eight. Now in the third molecule, carbon is surrounded by eight electrons. However, oxygen has a negative charge. The other oxygen has a positive charge. That's not ideal um, uh, for the, those rules. So um, the one that has the, the most major contri contribution to the real structure would be B, which is Roman numeral two. Next, consider the following two reactions. We have cyclohexanol, uh, which is um, being deprotonated so that now you see cyclohexanol is the conjugate acid of cyclohexoside ion, which is the conjugate base. That's uh, how it works. Conjugate acid, conjugate base pairs. Then you have a Ka value, which is unbelievably low. Okay, Ka, and you need to get uh, just a comfort about Ka values and so on. And a number that's ten to the minus eighteen. That's point zero 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 can can continue until you said it eighteen times. One, and so that's a very low number. And uh, you should have a sense that when the Ka is so low, that means the pKa is relatively high, and, um, and that means you have the opposite for the conjugate base uh, each time. So you need to get into that habit because Acer likes these things uh, reversing. So, and, and then you have the phenol, which has a Ka, which is still low, 10 to the minus 10, but it's... Uh, yeah, it's 10 to the 8 times stronger, which is uh, a really big number. That's like 100 million times stronger um, than uh, cyclohexanol as a uh, acid. So um, the question being, which one of the following best explains why phenol is a much stronger acid than cyclohexanol? Well, here, um, I think uh, it's better to uh, draw this uh, out for you, but... So here is the, the phenol, okay, and, um, and what happens when, when you think about whether or not an organic chemi chemical has, is a strong acid or a weak acid, what you always check is the stability of the product. So if it can dissociate and if that product will now be stable, if there's, then um, you can uh, you can imagine that that product would happen more often than uh, than if the product would be unstable. So here we we have the dissociation uh, of the acid, and uh, now we're going to look at some resonance structures that can exist. These electrons can come into this ring. Now that is something that cannot be done with cyclohexanol. And when the electrons come into the ring, you have a series of uh, structures that you can um, write. Um, let me try to stay consistent with these uh, bonds. And uh, so you'll have the electron came in here, hits this. This will come out to here, uh, the, this double bond. Once these electrons come down, this comes out to here. 
And so the electrons, uh, I think it's easier to visualize here. The electrons come down here, but carbon can only be bonded four times. It's already bonded four times. So when these electrons come down here and, and hits this carbon, these electrons come out to here. And then these electrons can travel in the ring, bond here, and these electrons can come out here to this point. These electrons can then come here and knock these electrons up to this point. And it creates this resonance structure. And in fact, when you um, have an electron donating group, like O-, minus, it's a group that can donate electrons to the ring, then you can say that um, there are certain positions in the ring that will be a little bit negative because of the resonance forms that can be created. And, um, and this creates some interesting possibilities. It means that if you're going to add something that's an electrophile, electrophile, file means loving, just like an audiophile is somebody who loves sound or music, so an electrophile is a um, substance in organic chemistry that loves electrons. And so if it loves electrons, of course it can go over here, but if it's a very powerful electrophile, it can attack these positions. And these positions are, um, are called the ortho uh, power positions of a ring. Um, they would give you that information in the exam, but the, what they will do also is they'll, they'll sometimes they'll add electron withdrawing groups or electron donating groups to the ring and ask you what would the effect be on the base, on the acid. And what the effect is that if you have an electron withdrawing group that you were to add here and that's pulling electrons to itself, what it does is it, the electron withdrawing group will stabilize these electrons that are coming here. And by stabilizing the electrons, it means that it makes this reaction occur more. And it means that this becomes a stronger acid just because you add an electron donating group onto the original compound. Then it becomes a stronger acid. If you add an electron donating group onto the compound, it weakens the acid because then it destabilizes the conjugate base. And so, um, that's what they are looking for. So in this question um, 74, which of the following um, best explains why phenol is a much stronger acid than cyclohexanol? Uh, a is the phenoxide ion is a monocyclic aromatic. Yes, it's a monocyclic one uh, um, cycle uh, aromatic compound. Aromatic uh, has conjugate um, double bonds in, in, in a ring. Um, and that's part of the definition. The, um, but A is irrelevant. <laughs> yes, it's true, but it's irrelevant. But then looking at B, the phenoxide ion is less stable than the cyclohexoside ion. Uh, quite the opposite. The phenoxide ion, this is far more stable because of resonance. Resonance uh, provides that extra stability. And that's why, by the way, this is a stronger acid. It's stronger because this conjugate base is more stable than the uh, cyclohexoside ion. And then uh, C, the negative charge on the phenoxide ion is delocalized over the benzene ring. This is what um, uh, we're looking at here. It is delocalized over the ring and that increases the stability. And finally, uh, phenoxide ion is more soluble in, in hydroxide solution than uh, anyway, there's no talk about this and not to mention uh, this wouldn't be too, it, it's not so fantastically soluble in, um, in, in polar compounds because, of course, this is an apolar environment, at least this part of the ring. So um, that is uh, that section, uh, knowing about electron, with, feeling comfortable about electron withdrawing groups and electron donating groups is important. Uh, if you uh, need to review uh, some information on uh, um, resonance structures and so on, here are some sections uh, um, from the uh, Gold Standard book that you should take a look at.